Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who Big Finish video. Yes, in today's Doctor Who Big Finish video I'll be taking a look at a three part adventure, Kingdom of Silver. Yes, the TV movie Seventh Doctor versus the Cybermen. Um, now this um, ties into the Big Finish Cyberman series. Um, obviously this is the second Doctor Who story what links into the actual series itself. The first being Sword of Orion and then you have Cyberman uh, series one and then you have Kingdom of Silver. And then you have Cyberman 2 because obviously this is written by James Swallows who wrote Cyberman 2. And I think in the future I probably will look at Cyberman 2 because I did look at series 1 a few years ago. Um, so I definitely want to look at series 2 because it's probably my favourite of the bunch of the Cyberman series. Um, so yeah I thought I'd review this because I remember listening to this back in 2014 and thinking yeah it's alright. Um, but since then I've sort of got no memory of it so I thought I'd refresh myself. And revisit it to see whether I was right to forget about it. Um, so without further ado let's look at the presentation for this release and then we'll go into my thought on the story. So taking a look at the cover art now the cover art is very simple but very effective because obviously you've got the Cyberman there, the Seventh Doctor and a sort of magma burst there and the sort of futuristic helicopter, Doctor Who, the Seventh Doctor sidebar there, the side of the release and the back of the release. If you want to know more about the story, then do feel free to pause. We've got the cast list and the total running time being 120 minutes. And this story does feature the bonus story of Keepsake, um, which I won't cover in this video because I've got a little video planned in the future to talk about the sort of bonus one part episodes um, in the future. So taking a look at the leaflet now, we have writer's notes by James Swallows. We have some nice behind the scenes photos. And then we have co-director's notes by Ken Bentley and a little cast list for Keepsake. And then moving to the other page, we have the lovely concept art, which I really do like. I think that's a really nice bit of concept art, so I do miss that in the later Big Finish releases. Then we have the next installment in the main range, advertisement for Doctor Who magazine. And then we have a bit of bug from the 7th Doctor, and a bit more concept art of the city of um, Argentia. And the disc art for the story is exactly the same for both discs. Kingdom of Silver, so this story ties into Big Finish's Cyberman series with this story featuring the Orion android from the Orion War. And the bonus episode, Keepsake, acts as more of a coverage on the android and is more of a tie-in um, to Cyberman 2, but I'll, um, I'll talk about Keepsake in a future video. Um, so, if you haven't experienced Big Finish's Cyberman series and you want to check Kingdom of Silver out, um, then you can, um, you, you can, um, because I listened to this before um, I listened to Cyberman series 1. Um, and I understood it perfectly fine. So what do I make of this story? Well, revisiting it, I probably enjoyed this story more this time around because of the excellent world building of Tassac and it being a very different setting to feature a Cybermen with it being very a regal setting, which you don't really sort of um, picture a Cybermen in these sort of very courtly regal settings. So I think they fit this setting very well. And I feel like this story offers something new for the Cybermen with the society being built around the Cybermen and I will say that this story is no spare part, but it's certainly an enjoyable listen. Part 1, so we start off with this character called Sara, who becomes one of the companions of the adventure, being held prisoner um, by Magus, who wants to join the House of Argentia. So you, so you wonder why she has to join the house, and you know, why does Magus need her help? Um, so like I said, one of the brilliant things and standout features of this story is the world building. You know, learning that there's been this massive war, the sort of a civil war between um, Argentia and Sarkotia, you know, and people are coming to Tassac for refuge. So does Tassac hold the future? And um, we learned that Tassac offers the finest blend of tea, and that's why the Doctor's there. So I can't blame the Doctor being there to see the finest tea in the universe. And this is when the Doctor bumps into another sort of companion for the adventure called Tamata, and that is a brilliant scene between the Doctor and Tamata. Uh, we learn that Tamata is on this sort of mission, and he's trying to trace this sort of energy source. And while this is all going on, we all have the sort of different houses of, you know, Tassac arriving for this noble mind event. Another thing what I love about this story is it's full of mystery. You know, why is this island so important? You know, what is this heart? And what does it have to offer? And we have this interesting revelation between Tamata and Sarah as it raises an interesting question. And of course, we do have a very classic style cliffhanger. Part 2, so we have the Doctor's horror of the reveal of the Cybermen as the Doctor and crew travel to the island so we learn more of Tassac's folklore with it being a twisted myth based on the remnants of the Cybermen technology and using the Cyberman technology um, in the war um, against sort of Argentia and Sarkota and sort of becomes sort of an arms race between Earth and sort of um, the androids um, so that sort of ties into the Orion War which is rather cool 
And what we learned that the people of Argentia only see um, prosperity with this ascension. As we learn why the Cybermen are here, as there are tombs and they are being activated. So we learn more about the political landscape of the story that it's either they face another civil war or they become Cybermen. So that's a really interesting dynamic played throughout the story. And again, we have a very traditional classic style cliffhanger. Part three, so we have a clever resolution um, to the cliffhanger. And has Tasek finally getting the rebirth, what has been prophesized as conversion begin, which has some excellent sound design because when the sort of time men are sort of talking over, you can hear sort of the faint screams in the distance, which is just absolutely chilling. So I love that. As the side men are building their army, and I will say that this part does give me very much sort of a plant of the Daleks feel to it. Um, and if you've listened to it, you'll understand what I mean, but it does sort of have a Planet of the Dark vibe with sort of the reveal of the Cybermen and sort of the whole idea of sort of geothermal, um, the planet using sort of geothermal sort of stuff, which um, sort of, I won't say anymore because it will spoil the sort of ending for the story, I guess. Um, so we have the Doctor and crew being trapped in the tomb. Cybermen about to send a signal to activate more tomb worlds and the heart is revealed. Um, as we have some excellent body horror moments featured within this story, which as you would expect for the Cybermen because the Cybermen work brilliantly with body horror and this story does have a few moments like that throughout it. But I will say that this is my main sort of fault with this story is that part three feels very dragged out, especially the resolution, the whole resolution of the story of how the story ends just feels incredibly drawn out that you feel like it could be over a lot quicker and I feel like part three in, in my personal opinion does feel to be quite slow in, in places it does feel quite dragged out but it does sort of suffer pacing issues um personally and I, and I feel as well the resolution for me it feels a little bit predictable um it does sort of feel very predictable like oh once that element's been introduced like yeah that's how the story's going to end um so it, it does feel a bit drawn out for me because you're kind of waiting for that moment to happen and go yep i was right um but i will say that the final scene for the story i really do like actually because it's the doctor saying that the Cybermen are always there, you know, they're always waiting and it's his job to try and stop them all and I like that moment because, you know, the Seventh Doctor has battled gods and monsters um, to quote that big finish story, I guess and this is TV movie Seventh Doctor so like in Persuasion where he says that, you know, I'm, um, I believe that the person I become won't be able to stomach it and I really like that but this, this is sort of the late Seventh Doctor trying to finish um, some things off so I really do like that little detail. So speaking of the seventh doctor himself, Sylvester McCoy He gives an absolutely wonderful performance within this. I absolutely love the seventh doctor in this This is a very good performance by Sylvester McCoy. You know, he's very direct. He has all the answers You know, so he's sort of the classic seventh doctor quite deceiving very mysterious and sort of Waiting for things to happen. Um, but as soon as things start kicking off He's very much, you know, very direct to the point. You know, he sort of have him sort of having that sort of clown side to deflect um, when people are sort of questioning him, um, which I really like because he's got that sort of inner mystery, which I really like about the Seventh Doctor. And he, he does have some great moments with him having sort of feeling like a constant outsider, and he has an excellent speech about future with sort of green shoots rising from the ashes. Um, brilliant stuff, and I think that Sylvester McCoy really does excel within this story. Sarah, played by Katie Terrence, a great performance of her being quite frustrated that she can't help Magus. You know, with the, with the heart, um, and she's quite a level-headed character, and has quite a nice dynamic with Tamata, and be quite can be quite authoritative, and she does have some nice moments, especially in sort of part two, um, to really shine. Tamata, played by Neil Roberts, another good performance and a real sort of great foil for the Seventh Doctor, um, as they're both sort of mysterious characters, and they're both you know having their cards close to their chest. So it's a really sort of great dynamic between the Seventh Doctor and Tamata because they're both sort of mysterious with each other. And he's very sceptical of the Doctor, and he's very sort of sarcastic, and he's very protective of Sarah, and him being sort of determined to fulfil his mission. Magus played by Terry Malloy. Um, wonderful performance by Terry Malloy, and it's great to see sort of Terry Malloy play um, a different character besides Davros. I know that in the TV series he played a different character in Attack of the Cybermen, um, and obviously in some recent years he's you know played another character in the third Doctor Adventures, which I'll be reviewing next. Um, but yeah, wonderful performance. He's quite a charming character of him being sort of a scientist and him wanting to lead his people to a brighter future and wanting what's best for his people. So I, I really do like that, that. That's sort of his strong core feelings that he wants the best for Argentia and Tasek, that he wants this bright and shining future. So what are my overall thoughts on Kingdom of Silver? Well, it is a good story at the heart of it. I guess that's a bit of an un unintentional pun. Um, because it's full of some interesting twists and turns and the Cybermen have a great presence within this story. Even when they don't feature within the story, 
there is sort of a sense of foreboding that there is sort of like a shadow hanging over the planet and the sound design really does help add that sort of feel that they are metal beings with the sound design being very heavy and it just works with the Cybermen that you believe that these are very sturdy and and tough um, being. Celeste McCoy really does shine within this story and definitely um, enjoyed this sort of solo outing and it's made me want to sort of revisit some of these sort of later TV movie Seventh Doctor stories of his solo um, adventures like Valhalla and Frozen Time. Um, because I just love the idea of a sort of more later Seventh Doctor. I love that sort of that he's beginning to wrap things up now and he's getting ready for the end. So I really do like that. So back to the actual story, I feel like the world building is very good. I think that it again is one of the standout features, you know, the sort of exploring the, the ideologies and the history of this world. And really does help flesh this story out. And I will say that the main problem I have with this story is part three. I did think that it dragged out and the resolution being very sort of drawn out and it's sort of being predictable in my personal opinion. Um, I think that's what lets this story down because otherwise it is, it is a good story. It is a good story but like I said part three is when the story starts to crumble in my opinion personally. So overall I'm going to give this story a 7 out of 10. Very fitting because it's a 7 Doctor story. Um, it's a good story. It definitely isn't one of the strongest Cyberman Big Finish outings. There are a lot better Cyberman stories in the Big Finish catalogue. But this one is good enough. It is a good story. Um, and if you want to check it out, then yeah, do check it out. Because Sylvester McCoy is brilliant. And the Cybermen have a great presence within it. And the world building is fantastic. But like I said, part three is when the story just doesn't really sort of work for me. And it sort of falls apart. But other than that, I think that it is enjoyable. And um, yeah. That concludes this video, I hope you have enjoyed this review and I'll see you in my next Big Finish review which will be a review of of course the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 6, yes I'll be taking a look at Poison of the Daleks and Operation Hellfire, um, so that'll be very exciting. So thank you once again for watching this video and I'll see you next time, so thank you very much and goodbye!